Welcome to another episode of Grace at Work. My name is Alden and I'll be your host for the next few minutes. Our topic for today is all about the Gospel of Christ, better known also as the Gospel of Grace. Let's try to understand the essence or the importance of this Gospel that we are trying to preach to the ends of the earth. Stay tuned and I'll be back in a few minutes. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all those who are listening in the net. Welcome to Grace at Work. So today we're going to read on our key verse for today, and that's taken from Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. And it says, Paul, a bond servant of Christ. Paul, a bond servant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture concerning his son who was born of a descendant of David according to the flesh, who was declared the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. So let's have a word of prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you for an opportunity to expose the word, to understand more clearly the promised grace of God that is now here. Father, as we meditate and reflect upon the word, excite us, Lord. Bring forth joy in our hearts that we may be able to ce celebrate life in all aspects of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. Many people refer uh, to themselves today as apostles. I guess that has been very common uh, if you're going to open the net, there's a lot of apostles, there's a lot of prophets, self-declared prophets and apostles. It seems you only need a website nowadays. Kailangan mo lang ng isang website at isang calling card uh, or business card to be called an apostle. No? But uh, let's try to understand, before understanding our main topic for today, which is the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, or better known as the gospel of grace, Let's try to understand uh, Romans in its context. No? What is uh, Paul trying to project calling himself as an apostle? No? So it seems, uh, as I've said, uh, there are no legitimate apostles nowadays. No? Because the only legitimate apostles are those who have seen Jesus. Those who have seen Jesus. Uh, Paul, uh, the main character for today's uh, discussion no? uh, was a legitimate apostle because he had seen Jesus. He had seen Jesus and even experienced the, uh, the, the teachings uh, in the Arabian desert. No? Uh, this gave Paul, uh, my dear friends, the authority to proclaim the gospel which had been promised in the Old Testament. Uh, this is through the prophets. Now, uh, this is not emphasizing on the title. Unfortunately, a lot of New Testament people who would like to basically uh, create a, a, a uh, what do you call this, a certification or uh, a, 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 what do you call this, uh, some important documents to qualify them in preaching the gospel would call themselves apostles using scripture as the basis for them being called apostles. Unfortunately, the real apostles are those who found Jesus. And, uh, well, they might be qualified. If we're going to look at it on a spiritual level, yes, they have found Jesus or Jesus found them along the way. But let's try to understand clearly what scripture says about it. No? Now, Paul, as I've said, uh, has been given the authority. That is to proclaim the gospel which had been promised to the Old Testament. Okay? Through the prophets, as I've said a while ago. Now, here we, uh, we see a reference to the predestination that Paul talks about through the book of Romans. 
uh, you will be shocked that predestination is not like what we thought before. That one person is predestined, another is not. Another one is predestined, another one is not. That uh, God is selective to those who will enter heaven. But clearly in this particular verses, this one to four verses, it would give us an idea that the gospel, it's the gospel that was predestined to come to the entire world. I mean, it came for the Gentiles, it came also for the Jews. So it was predestined, the gospel, Jesus Christ himself. The gospel of Christ, the gospel of grace, has been predestined to come to both Gentiles and Jews. Importantly, my dear friends, the gospel is about Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less. Can, can, can I repeat that? The gospel is nothing more about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. A descendant who happens to be rather a descendant of David, Jesus was not uh, of the tribe of Levi. That's something very important to understand. Jesus was not part of the tribe of priests. He came from the tribe of Judah. Now, the tribe of Judah had never ever produced a high priest under the Old Covenant. You can check on Hebrews chapter 7 verse 4 about it. Yet, and, and let me repeat it, yet uh, Jesus ushered something better the old was different because it was under an old priesthood the levitical priesthood but this time there is something better it's coming from what from judah no uh, the new covenant this is the new covenant uh well according to this covenant this new and better covenant he is a high priest forever can I repeat that? Jesus is the high priest forever. No? Uh, this genealogy, along with the Holy Spirit's resurrection of Jesus from the dead, affirms his authority as the Savior of the entire humanity. So, what's the big picture, my dear friends? First, the gospel is preached not by a particular group of people, no, or not particular a particular person, every believer, just like Paul, can preach the gospel at the side of the cross. Are you getting that? The message is not that you have a title. The message is not you are an apostle. The message is that Paul was an apostle or somebody else is an apostle. The great big message, the great big picture is that Jesus is the center of the gospel. The gospel is about his death. The gospel is about his burial. The gospel is about his resurrection. More than anything else, the gospel includes our new identity. What do you mean by that? Our inclusion in the divinity, meaning that we are one with Christ. We are one with the Holy Spirit and we are one with God. We are sealed all together by the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's a wonderful truth that we are preaching. That's a wonderful truth that each and every person in this universe needs to know. And yet some of them reject. So this is not about isms. Can I repeat that? The gospel is not another religion. It's not another ism that we can debate upon. The gospel is the gospel. The gospel is nothing but the word of God. The gospel is everything that Jesus has done at the cross. So, what is the gospel all about? It focuses on the central message of nothing else, no one else, but the Lord Jesus Christ. And together with this, it focuses on his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Number two, it emphasizes the universal offer, not universalism, not another ism, but it emphasizes the universal offer of salvation to all people through faith in Jesus Christ. It offers salvation through Jesus Christ, meaning apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. 
Number three, it teaches that salvation is by grace. By grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Let me repeat. It teaches that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, and in Christ alone, regardless of your theological label. There's a lot of labels, there's a lot of isms as I've said. Now what else? It highlights the importance of repentance. It highlights the importance of repentance. It also highlights the importance of faith. And it also highlights the importance of obedience as a response to God's grace. What kind of obedience are we talking about here? An obedience that comes from the heart. What kind of faith are we talking about? A faith that trusts God through the finished work of Christ. What repentance are we talking about here? A total change of mind, believing that Jesus is indeed uh, the Christ, the Messiah, contrary to what the Jews have rejected. And finally, it stresses, my dear friends, the transformational power of the Holy Spirit. This is the time and the era wherein the Holy Spirit is our coach. He continuously uh, reminds us of what we have in Christ. It stresses the transformational power of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. Friends, every one of us who believes in Christ no, have the Holy Spirit, Spirit and He never left us again. This leads us to a life characterized, listen to this, characterized by love. We are loving people. Characterized by joy, we are joyful people at the midst of all our turmoils. We are people of peace, meaning nothing missing, nothing broken, because we are uh, abiding in Christ. And finally, and finally, we are obedient people. How does that obedience look like? It is an obedience coming from the heart. It is not a daily act of obedience, but an obedient heart because of our changed heart. So, my dear friends, today, uh, let me remind you that uh, it's not about isms. It's all about the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ talks about grace. The, the gospel of uh, uh, grace talks about Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less. Inclusive to that, is His death, burial, life, and resurrection. We have been changed because of His life. Have a blessed day, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.